the leader. Now, I believe uh, in that permutation, guys, it is a seven-two that they a seven-two or better. They need to uh, they need to get to stay in first seed. But regardless, the bigger the bigger point, I guess, is you know making sure you're top two, right? So a win in this game will secure it. I haven't actually looked at the permutations. Nope, a win in either case, whether it's regulation or overtime, will lock them into top two. So it's uh, it's promising, but uh, Diables, honestly. They have played spoils before, and I'm sure they will play spoils again. Consistent from Joe Gore across the entire league at the moment, a 128 EPS. Xenox, this is a, a performance that I think probably needs... The, the admiration that we've given it, I think, has been fair, but considering their fifth place and have only won three games, that is a phenomenal EPS. Yeah, it's been a strange old stage for Direwolves, kind of the better than the rest situation where they were, you know, good enough to beat Daystar, good enough to beat Hasib Warriors. Um, but, you know, their games against Fury, Jalida, both losses. And so, and well, Bleed as well. Gives them one kind of final chance against those SCA teams now where, um, you know, for Die Wolves, it's a matter of can they get at least one over Elevate? Otherwise, if they don't beat Elevate, their only wins this stage would have come against Hasib, Knock Knock, and Daystar. That doesn't really fill me with much hope then going into the playoffs they have the lowest round differential out of the top five the truth mm. is if they don't win this game they, they're not really in any kind of position i don't think that they're actually then going to be able to challenge for manchester no and to be fair to make a claim to that conversation you do you have to be competitive in these games you have to be pushing bo ones you've got to be looking like the better team in some of the rounds at the very least but speaking of a team that have actually looked really good on their day guys elevate coming into this stage i was a little bit skeptical of what to expect obviously and hi cal you know a bit of a debutant shared the 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 imports if you will brought into this team i genuinely didn't know how they would blend you know you're talking tier two tier three uh, Europe coming into Asia, I genuinely was worried about where that would, where it would meld, I guess. But it's really, it's come together so nicely. Yeah, it's still weird to think that only a couple of weeks ago they suffered that 0-7 loss to the hands of Fury over on Consulate. I remember casting that game and it did not uh, look at all like the Fury, or pardon me, the Elevate that we're now seeing over the last couple of play days, culminating into that win against Bleed. As mentioned, it now puts them in a position where, as you mentioned, a 7-2 win or better will actually propel them into first place but more importantly any win of any description will lock them in top two which again gives you that buy that favorable seating i don't think this is going to necessarily be an easy game for elevate but as you can see on the numbers here favorable in so many regards that defensive win rate really strong 79 percent i'd probably hedge my bets it's the best in the league at the moment and so for divers breaking that down is going to be a real challenge well, a debut at Tier 1 is always incredible, but when you consider that both of these two players have yet to play at that level uh, in this Blast R6 ecosystem, it's quite phenomenal to see both of them doing so well, Jake. Yeah, it is. I, I think Joe Gore has impressed everyone so far this stage that he's actually been able to kind of back up the hype. He continues to perform really well and also on a team that, as I said, fundamentally isn't actually playing all that well in a lot of these games against these other top SCA teams. He's the standout. Now, that's kind of the concern. It's it's Jogor or Bust. If he doesn't play well, they don't play well. Whereas I don't think there is that same kind of concern for Shed. He's not the superstar of the team. Statistically speaking, you've still got Speakeasy and Anhai Carl who actually perform a little bit better than him. One thing that Shed, though, really does actually have over his teammates is his entry. He does lead the way 7-3, to three, so he does have a plus 4. Jogor, of course, leads the way I think across almost the entire competition with a plus eight he is number one so you're looking at a, a pretty big gap there statistically yeah Joe Gore has kind of got overshed as an individual but as a team elevate certainly over the diables yeah, both of these teams have been so exciting to watch inside of the server, um, both for different reasons. Shed having to adapt to the Asian playstyle, Joe Gorm also having to adapt to the higher tier of play in comparison. Um, one of the main reasons I decided to go with these two was that storyline in combination there with Shed actually in that Bleed Esports uh, matchup. Top rated player, had plus the entry, really strong, 92% cost. So he's a real menace inside of the server when he gets going. And as evident by operator selections, they're both going to play similar roles. All right, well, it's time to turn our attention to the Vitos. Uh, and I actually think the Vitos could play a little bit of a part here. Uh, Diawals just currently are not looking super comfortable against the best teams. So they're definitely going to need something where they will feel at their best. Don't ask me what that map is, because honestly, I am, I'm not the stats man. 
the uh, the stat man of this league is James Devmarta Stewart, and he's not here, so I'm going to give it to the, uh, the the better stat man, the Scat Man. Guys, what do you think about this one? Gee, that's that's a little bit hard. <laughs> that's harsh. a good song, Rob. That's a good song. It's a that... fantastic song. <laughs> yeah, just having a quick look back in terms of map history for both of these teams, get a gauge on what they've actually been willing to play, and Chalet has been a huge one for, for both of these particular rosters. Um, as far as I look, and looking at Divers have not played Oregon at all this stage, and Elevate played it once, played a one, it was a 7-1 over Knock Knock. Um, so maybe it's something that Divers have been willing to pocket and hide. Uh, it's a different storyline to the previous matchup where we saw Border and like, whoa, what the hell, why is Bleed going here? And then I made, you know, the fair argument, I think, that it was a very one-sided matchup and any of the nine maps, they'd be good enough with the fundamentals to win it. This one's a little bit different where it's more competitive and maybe there's a little bit more on the line here for Diewolves to show in terms of trying to build momentum into playoffs. Equally so for Elevate, who very much want that top two position as well. So I find it hard to believe that either team would be too unhappy with where it's landed. And given the lack of historical data, it's very difficult to make a case that one team over the other has really won it out unless i'm missing some glaring result somewhere but i don't think i am and so it doesn't really change my prediction going in elevate should be winning this game i don't know how comfortable it's going to be die at their very best should be able to push something like a 7-4 7-5 maybe even ot yeah um, however elevate if they've really switched on and have learned a lot from that bleed win carry that into this game there is also the possibility that it is relatively one-sided as well. And keeping yep. in mind, if they want first place, 7-2 or better. So they should just go in with the mindset of winning every single round as best they can. And not only that, they have to win Elevate. They cannot allow this to fall into the loss category. Doesn't matter whether it's OT or whether it's a regulation loss. As Fury's final game is Hasib, you would imagine they are going to win that game and would emphatically. So the round differential could really come back to buy Elevate. They must win this matchup. And, uh, well, it's time to get underway. Let's go ahead to the stat man. Call me the stat man, but I reckon I could be the scat man. Butter bim, butter boom, wibbly wobbly, dibbly dobbly. And we've got Elevate versus Dire Wolves with high stakes, Mandy. Yeah, this is an exciting one, especially I Can't think for you, tonight. Be we, real with you right now. We've anticipated we've anticipated all these games to be super one sided. And so um yeah, I think this is gonna be the one that I think we're hoping to be close at least. But nevertheless, for Elevate, it needs to look pretty competitive and convincing. So I'm excited to see what they bring into the server and see if they can look as good as we hope that they will. And like Guz said, a seven two or a seven one or a seven zero for Elevate will confirm themselves the number one team on the standings. Bleed Cannot jump over them. Bleed have already played today. Uh, Elevate can steal that first place, which I think would be a huge mm. upset. Everyone was looking at Bleed to be the best team this year. Fury potentially elevates rework, bringing in some imports over from Europe. It was a big gamble. We knew they'd be good, but we didn't know how good they would be. Unfortunately for Elevate though, as Rob put, they really need to win this game. If they lose, then there's a very good chance that Fury is going to be nipping at their heels and jump straight on over them and take their second seed away from them. So huge stakes here on for Elevate. For Die Wolves, less so. There is a chance that they could jump up into fourth place. Uh, however, they'd just be playing the same team anyway. So it doesn't mm -hmm. really matter at the end of the day. Yeah, exactly. Elevate need to give us a convincing showing here, but play camps have been quite exciting for these guys so far. They have a lot of energy going into these games and they certainly know how to have fun and I think uh, against this Diables roster as well yes you need to be paying attention because otherwise they will take rounds off you but so far Elevate have been a, a pretty entertaining team to watch all things considered yeah I really enjoyed uh, having a chat with Rando as well or Rando Sando I don't know what he prefers it but the coach of this roster really solid um, interviewee we we're very lucky that yeah. he dialed in and yeah, it was really interesting to hear like the way that Elevate have been practicing since they brought in Shed and MC over from Europe, obviously and Haikal as well, but he was not from Europe. He was just a local ranked star. Uh, I'm, yeah, I'm really curious to see how these guys go. Not only today, obviously, seeing if they can lock in that number one spot, but moving into BO3 as we have not yet seen Elevate play best of threes. Looking forward to the best of threes, especially in this region. I mean, the, I think the top four are so tightly contested, or yeah, for the major spot that I think once we get into some of those longer, longer format games, I think it'll be really entertaining, um, especially for us on the cast as well. Whereas I think these best of ones 
Certainly towards the last couple of play days have started to peter out, I think, because it's quite clear the division uh, at the moment uh, in this region. So nevertheless, we're still going to watch this game play out for Elevate as they look to secure themselves in that second seed. And starting out in the defense is the perfect place to begin their run. Yeah, Bleed will be enjoying watching this game as well, because as soon as Dawals finds three rounds, uh, they have confirmed themselves number one seed in the league, which is cool. And obviously it changes which side of the bracket you end up on, like first versus second seed. If you're first seed, you end up playing the fourth slash fifth place team in the league, whereas if you're second seed, you end up playing the third slash sixth place team in the league. So that'll in theory be the side of the bracket where Fury ends up on, assuming Elevate do manage to win this game and Fury can't jump over them. Um, that, so that really is the why Elevate and Bleed both want to be gunning for the number one spot, because whoever's in number two spot will likely be versing Fury. Mm, that could be a not a fun time, especially with Fury back on the rise as well. They really looked like they were struggling at the beginning of stage one, but I think they've shaken off some of the rust and they look a lot more in it now. And even Reeves in his interview just a few minutes ago pointed out that, yeah, Fury are the guys that they're going to be looking out for in that grand final and they really don't want to be facing up them early on in the brackets. So here goes Elevate on their roam. Uh, four of the five players back in the bomb site now. I'm not exactly sure where Night Cal is, but he's actually all the way in tower, looking to contest all the way over uh, onto the entry of Seal, but he actually falls off from that early on. Seal's able to get inside the tower pretty easily. No damage taken. Five on five. And now we work our way through the mid round and see what they can do. Attackers have located a bomb. A lot of work to do in the mid round. Open the hatch quite slow with the Maverick. Got to be careful as well not to take any damage. I like the way that Seal is actually peeking down this. You never know when a player might expose themselves and you might get a freebie. Big advantage. Like, playing with a numbers advantage on a basement attack of this map is so advantageous. All right, so E hatch open. What are Die Wolves going to do next? We've got Felox who's just jumped on the Brava drone uh, at the moment to try and seek what he can do as well and get some info on the site now. He has identified that there is a player inside of Freezer. There's one inside of Laundry as well, and is going to use his Clutch Drone to try and enable his teammates to get inside the bomb site and try and disable some of the utility in here remotely. And same thing is Jogor as well on some of the Rotero drones. They're going to see how much of the bomb site they can break apart through the mid round without actually having to take a gunfight. Well, 40 seconds to go, and Dialwars are actually looking reasonably ready to execute. However, this gas deep in laundry will make things awkward and a C4 to follow up so Dibbles really have only achieved baiting utility out. Now the Warden is on a long angle but he does get taken on down. Opening pick goes away at Dibbles and another gas goes out here as well. MC still has one left in pocket. Asil looks to poise himself getting deep. Out the smokes go. Warden is dead. Nobody to deny. No C4 here as well but MC with the gas will take out Seal. Where is that plan? A good smoke bang though from Speakeasy. Great game sense, bit of audio, and it's him and MC to lock out the round at the end of it. Four elevate, a bit touch and go there, but nice way to lock it in. Yeah, a valiant attempt there for Die Wolves to try and execute in through the front side of the map, um, all the way down inside of Laundry, but unfortunately stunted out by some great smoke placements from MC. By the time that Die Wolves actually went in for the execute, the rest of Elevate were so poised for that execute to come in through. Not only did a player die to the smoke trying to entry into the bomb site, but they had to reposition that plant two or three times before they could even get it down halfway, and by the time they actually found a safe spot inside the smoke, Speakeasy was there to take that plant down as well so yeah really well composed there from elevate forcing die wolves on a bit of a ruckus through the bomb site and yeah, they able to claim that one fairly easily but you know what we say dev on oregon if you are going to win the map you got to be winning your basements uh, you, know? you, you really do if you ain't winning basement winning them. then why are you playing this map right so the fact that it got close actually bodes pretty well here for die wolves the guy said on the desk but i actually think uh, as much as everyone has predicted all of the you know the favored teams to win today like there's pretty clear favorites for each match this is the one where there's probably the most likely to be a little bit of a split despite elevate being really good like die wolves are definitely like the fifth team looking in at potentially challenging top four and we've seen that in their results right like they had pretty close games with all of the top four teams they lost to bleed 7-4 lost to fury 7-5 jolita 7-5 
and I think that really tells you what this team's capable of. If they lose to Elevate here, 7-5, then that actually does knock Elevate out of the top place on the standings. And, well, Daiwas are already looking really solid here. Two early picks. Poised well to lock out their first attack. Good cutoffs as well on the big tower, dedicating two or three players to ensuring that Shed went down early. Rotation hole completely punished. Not only is that uh, free tower control now, but it's also a way for them to get inside of Attic. MC is going to try and at least fulfill uh, some of that loss that uh, Elevate has found themselves in early on and claw his way back inside a tower, prevent that entry from coming through. Speak easy needs to get aggressive here on the clash. Can't I like this. So Elevate are taking a lot of gambles here. MC here, very advanced. Speak easy's trying to cover his behind. The way that Elevate make this work is by finding picks back. And that really means isolating these ones, taking uh, risks. Uh, Ape has done that really well. It, it, it's clear that Elevate have a really clear idea of how to play this. MC's found a big pick. There's a trade on back, but there might have been enough done here by Elevate. They've turned a 3v5 into a 1v3. Never mind. I take that back. I take it all back. Direwolves, a good lockout at the end of it. The Bs forcing Speakeasy back, and the final kill ends up quite easy. Yeah, solid attack there from Direwolves to be able to convert the man advantage. They got super early on. They dedicated a lot of players to moving their way on through Big Tower, making sure that rotational couldn't be reinforced back up, capitalizing on the entries coming through as well. Even though the rest of the Elevate players that were left behind in the wake of that early game tried to get aggressive and make plays, those were shut down as well by Direwolves. They expected that aggression. They played the slow game and they shut them down and they're able to convert the man advantage from there. Solid round there from Die Wolves onto the top floor. And they're looking competitive so far, Dev. Keep in mind as well, it's worth remembering. They need, what is it, three rounds to, well, yeah, for Bleed to need. be able to lock in that first place um, yeah. seed going into the playoffs. So Bleed are pretty excited right now. They are big fans. Yeah, Bleed are definitely Diwell's biggest fans right now, and it's, it is funny that it happens to be in a match that really doesn't have many repercussions for Diwell's. Like, they could win this 7-0 or lose... Oh, sorry. Yeah, they could win this 7-0 or lose this 7-0, and they're still going to be versing the same team in the uh, in the playoffs, right? Like, yeah. unless... I mean, if Shalita win tonight and Fury doesn't, then they'll be versing Fury, but that's still outside their control. Like, these guys aren't going to be aren't going to be moving uh, above fourth place, which means they will be versing either the fourth place or fifth place team. It's going to be the leader or Fury. Well, this is fun from Elevate. They've repicked the Clash again on Speakeasy, but this time around, uh, they're making sure that early control cannot happen over in Master. Not just that, but they're fully reinforced off Attic as well. So they're not looking to go and play that rotation into Tower anymore, realizing that that was shut down early, and instead they're going to keep it closed for as long as possible. Not only is... Uh, the wall electrified currently, but Shed's got another one in his pocket that he's going to use to trick the wall once they try and get it open. Speakeasy as well is going to fall back from this closet position relatively quickly. So Elevate in general, looking like they are playing the more cautious game this time around. It is interesting to me that they're still running this clash. Is this going to be a run out? I love this from Ape! Doesn't quite work out, but Speakeasy was calling the players on the balcony. Now, when you're on the balcony, uh, but not... Not the balcony itself, but like the awning that covers the balcony. You're completely exposed to anyone running out small tower or showers window. So I like the idea that unfortunately didn't pan out for Elevate. And now N. Heichel's in an awkward position, but he's a real gunner. And so he gets in with a shot, is traded on back. And unfortunately for Elevate, they do lose that number's advantage from a 4v or 5v4 down to a 3v4. I'm going to be honest, Mandy. I was looking really solid on this bomb site. There's two attacks in a row where they are just dominating, mincing up, elevate. And now, oh, okay, good one from Speakeasy. It needs to be careful. There's an eye any refrag. Shed also did a little bit of damage earlier onto that player that was coming on through, but no kill as of yet. And of course, Seal is rotated to the kid's window. Direwolves are looking very solid. One more round and elevate. Can't stay in the number one spot in the league.
Yeah, another quick attack as well there for Direwolves. They fully capitalized once again on the early game. Two rounds in a row now, we've seen them really have a grip on the early game in the top floor, being able to find the the first pick and then converting it from there through the mid round as well. Elevate, even though they tried to play a more cautious game that time around the top floor, they completely changed their strategy. It still didn't work out for them. They still looked overzealous trying to fall back into the bomb site, taking some ill-advised gunfights and Die Wolves completely punished them for that. Keep in mind, Dev, Die Wolves, they can shoot back. They are not just some team that will kind of like walk at you, right? These guys are absolute gunners. And I think Elevate have probably got a little bit too much confidence against these guys. Yeah, I'm going to agree with you on that one. Diewolves are playing really well today. And it's not like... There have been some games from Diewolves where they look a little bit lost. They look like they lack direction, but a player will go nuts. Like Joe Gore, for example. In this game, it's actually Seal who's really fragging out. But Diewolves are playing this so smart. Even little minor things. Like, instead of just brute forcing their way through Attic, they rotate one player Attic, but not aggressive one goes on the kid's window several master you just put pressure everywhere it's how you lock out these numbers advantages make sure that you're not overextending make sure that you're able to refrag but you've got really solid coverage of the map it just goes to show that like diewolves are learning week to week and they are figuring out how to take on even the best teams in the league right so Having lost the top floor twice, Elevate are now able to go back down into the basement, having uh, that bomb site unlocked for them. And I think they've done the right thing here, have Elevate and not extended out into the map, especially with the way that Direwolves have been so good at finding these early advantages. You really don't want to afford them those gunfights within the first minute of the round. So instead, they're going to play the safe game and go all the way back down into the comfort of the bomb site. But what that does mean is that Direwolves have been afforded free real estate of the entire map. and. That means the early ground can be played out pretty quick and they can make these motions through the mid rounds happen uh, as well. And they've got a lot of tools to do that with not only do they have the secondary hard breach charges on Capital, but they've also got the Maverick and the Hibana as well. So anything they might need to get open through this mid round will be opened up pretty easily. Yeah, it's really just more about the time management, right? Rather than the actual utility available. Yeah. Elevate did lock in this basement defense last time, but it actually got very close. And it really came down to MC using the smokes really well to burn time and eventually get the opening kill and speakeasy to deny the plant despite not having smoke. Now, funny to me, Manny, that despite Dahl was going for such a smoke heavy execute last time, Elevate's actually dropped the warden completely. That's interesting to me as well. It Felt like if that Warden was going to be in the right place at the right time, it could have done some real damage. Maybe they're just thinking that the info is more important here. I mean, I can see up at the moment on a camera. Maybe they're trying to use uh, the info through the ground floor to actually figure out exactly where Diwolves are coming from. Ooh, so they can posture this? themselves for the execute earlier. That's a re-aggression quickly there from Enhai Cal, who lands his headshot onto Souffle. That's a good early advantage for Elevate. We haven't seen them get one of those in a while. That's yeah, really nice. Very risky from N Cal, but it does net results. Speak easy. He's found one onto Joe Gore. Nice shot from N Cal there as well. And the execute not able to happen at all, as it's just massive aggression. Good from Felox though. He's actually found two pieces back. Three v two for Elevate. Still numbers advantage, but this is very fumbleable for the defense. Very possible that Diwolves can make this work, and Felox is about to take another fight. Speakeasy gets him, and this should be a done deal. Pika, two flashes. He's about to walk into what seems like a crossfire. There's one. Good trade, though, from Shed. Well played by Elevate. It started really strong. Bit of aggression, maybe even enabled from those Valkyrie cameras, and they converted that man advantage handily. I think it was pretty clear that Elevate knew exactly what was going on in that round. They anticipated the back takes come through. Now, whether it was off the back of N Cal going for that, uh, aggression through the back stairs and finding that pick or whether it was through the Valkyrie cameras on the ground floor, I'm not sure. But nevertheless, Elevate seemed to really know that back take was going to happen rather than the front side. And they had all their players postured ready for that to happen. And Heikel, especially in his position inside of Shiko, not only does he find the early pick, but then swings to help the player in bunk. That was Speakeasy, who got a double of his own as well. So solid round there for Elevate onto the basement. Played really well and much better anticipated than the previous attempt as well. So, Mandy, question remains. Elevate, they've won their two basements, but can they win anything else? Because they yes. need to win every round now. 
in That's order to question. retain number one spot. Like, they need to clean sweep. They need to win here. They go in kitchen meeting. And then they need to go probably back to dorms, win that, go back to the basement. And oh, I guess there is no more chance to go back to the basement in this <laughs> half. And then they would need to move on to their attack and win five in a row. It just seems like such a far cry. I think Bleeder are sitting here cheering, chilling. I don't think Elevate are likely to retain number one spot after this game. I would have to agree with you, to be honest. Uh, Die Wolves are actually playing a pretty excellent Oregon so far. Like, they're being really quick about their processes, and they're not stopping and stalling out, and they don't look lost in the server, I think is a big thing, right? Whereas I think for Elevate, they, they look a bit more nervous. I suppose, for, yeah, I don't know. I think you're completely right about that, to be honest, Steph. I think if I'm Blade sitting here, I'm feeling pretty good about jumping into that first place at the moment. I would hedge my bets on that as well. Unless Elevate can completely pre us wrong, which, you know what, that has happened before, so you never know. Five rounds in a row from here is where it'll take us. Big easy. Oh, that's a really long angle. Maybe don't contest that with the SMG 11. Just locking out the site. I like the way that Diewolves have already got a nice breach on the meeting wall. And that does look deep into site, especially with the DMR and a long scope like this one. Diewolves looking postured to try and claim and execute in through meeting at some point. So early control inside garage. Not just that, but Seal is really having a good think about doing big tower here as well. At the same time, the rest of the players of Dire Wolves, they're kind of just looking to probe the map, really. I mean, uh, that line of sight going to meeting does make me think that's what they're going to go for. But nevertheless, Joe Gore all the way in through the top oh, floor and his oh entry no. not only finds and high Cal, but Ape as well. Souffle wow. is going to double down on the early picks as well and find one to shed. Five versus two man advantage for Dire Wolves is pretty significant. Yeah, yet another round where Dire Wolves are in the driver's seat. Speakeasy, you heard him just to your left. Did he not hear it correctly? His teammate has found a kill. Pika seems to be aware of this. Pika does have flashes. Oh, and the position is revealed. Speakeasy loses his fight. MC in a one versus four. With the diffuser planted, this will need to be the retake of his life. Welcoming him into the Asia League is a big task ahead. That's the first kill onto the planter. Low HP now, but Direwolves have taken very strong positions. There's doors barricaded. MC's got no bloody clue. Two players around the corner. Direwolves steal the lead away from Elevate and lock those into second place in the league. Bleed will remain at the top of the standings. The entries are absolutely relentless for Dire Wolves on this attacking half. Elevate, it doesn't seem to matter what they do. They cannot shut down Dire Wolves on the early game whatsoever. And it has been a different player every time as well, Dev. It hasn't always been Joe Gore uh, getting his boots in the building and finding that early advantage. It's been Seal. It's been some of the other players as well. It, it has been such a rounded game so far for Dire Wolves uh, to find such a strong advantage against Elevate on the attack. And I think the question is still posed, Dev. Can they win anything that isn't the basement? They haven't done it yet. Yeah, this is actually... Like, forget about the fact that Elevate have now fumbled the top spot in the league, which means that they will probably have to first Fury in the semi-final. They might not even win this game at this point. I know that sounds kind of ridiculous, but Dire Wolves could actually beat Elevate here. Elevate might even lose second place in the standings. They might not even get straight into a semi-final. Wouldn't that be insane? Because if Elevate lose this game, and then Fury wins their game, then Fury jump over Elevate. And Elevate are out of the top two, and they're going to have to go play a quarter-final match. Oh, I'll tell you what, if you're Elevate, you really don't want to be thinking about that right now. They are not looking groovy in the server. Die Wolves, though. They are certainly looking hot in the hills right now on their final attacking attempt. Elevate are going to go back all the way up to Kids and Dorms, and... I think the safe game is the way to play it at the moment. No more clash, no more peeking through rotation holes and going inside of Attic and Big Tower and that type of thing. They're going to hunker on down in the bomb site, use the Azamis, use some of those Goyo canisters and smokes to deny uh, the late rounds and zone the execute from coming out. And 
honestly, I feel like that's the way to play it if you're at Elevate right now. Speakeasy's just taking some early damage. He's stuck here inside the corset. This is not good. Yeah, that that's is bad. really, that's quite poor. I don't know how he's going to escape. Maybe Shed could use a Kiba barrier to block off the doorway and enable an escape. Phones are ringing. Speakeasy could silence it by walking near that Mute Jammer. I think it's actually already silenced for him. There you go. Shed's getting aggressive. Shed could have used his Kiba to support his teammate. Instead, he's taking a fight, but thankfully, he wins it. Speakeasy's still aggressive, though. He's trying to play around these Mute Jammers. A two-player advantage for Elevate. jogor has got the info. He's got the audio. He's got good headset and good oh, ears. Oh, Speakeasy has managed to escape and reinforce off that rotate hole. Very close there from Joe Gore. I'm not going to lie, Zev. I actually thought that wall was double reared. I, I, I did not realize there was a rotation hole like either. I think it was just the way that we were looking at his point of view. But nevertheless, good play there from Speakeasy to be able to get away with his life and Shed as well to find the early pick downstairs, support his teammate. Joe Gore is going to look for the refrag, though. There's a play inside of security just around the corner. Meanwhile, Seal on the top floor is going to try and make Attic work for the attack as well. MC's bit left alone here and he doesn't seem to have a mute jammer so if Jogo does have any logic bombs left if he does he could just send that on through and that could enable an entry here he's actually gone outside they're gonna try and play for plant he's tempted to go what why jumping on inside Jogo, but the Vulcan canister detonates, and that is gonna burn basically the rest of the round he realistically needs to go for a kill here down below but he's also the one with the diffuser. Big from Seal, big double from Seal. Nine kills on the round, nine kills on the game. Ape's gone down. MC's the last one. He takes down a first player, but he doesn't know where that diffuser is. C4 goes off. Jogor dodges it. And MC doesn't quite have the information. He's looking for the player, going for the sound cue, but he has to retake in a 1v2. Elevate are being manhandled by Direwolves on the defense of Oregon, and Joe Gore locks in the final kill as well to make a comeback from a 3v5 happen. Direwolves devastating elevate on defense. Excellent pivot through the mid-round there for Direwolves, realizing that they didn't really have the control over inside of Master, but what they did have was double window as well. Not just that, but Joe Gore down in the ground floor as well, able to make his entry work all the way up through White Stairs and get the bomb down as well. Dodging the C4, dodging the vertical. MC was so close to being able to deny the plan in the last couple seconds there. But nevertheless, Dire Wolves in a pretty unfavorable position, able to find a weakness in the defense of Elevate. Seal as well, going from the backstab in through Attic was really, I suppose, just a nail in the coffin for that attack there for Dire Wolves. 4 2 half is pretty damning. Can I, um, can I tell you, I'm just reading the Twitch chat. And I want to say, I got to see a message from Mentalist after uh, Diables found their third round. Do you want to know what it says? What does it say? Mentalist. GG's, guys. Wrap it up. Forfeit to save Mental. Oh, that no. That is some BM from Bleed. Oh, no. I mean, Bleed is sitting there back chilling that they know they got their best position possible out of tonight, right? They got their full 7 nothing win. And that did put a lot of pressure on Elevate's shoulders to get well, a 7-2 or better. And now, of course, that has gone awry. And this is at the point where, like, it's more than just first place that's up for grabs. Like we said, Elevate could fumble second place on the standings if they lose this game and Fury win this. There's a real opportunity here for Fury, especially with their matchup at, right at the end of the day against the Sea Warriors, if I'm not wrong as well. So we're certainly in for a, a pretty monumental day of Rainbow Six in Asia, aren't we? Especially if this goes in the way of Direwolves from here on out, who, by the way, have now gone on to the defending half on Oregon. And of all things that you would consider here, you would think that this is where they can claim some rounds, right? Especially on the basement. Roam clear now for Arpe, who's on the Dokubi TMR in hand. He knows there's a player inside of Attic, but they get away with their life. That's Souffle over on the other side. Not just that, but Jogor is shut down and high Cal. Souffle gets taken down on the cutoff, though, but not out just yet. And now he's dead. Yeah, one pick back is good for Elevate. There goes the Dokubi's call once again. A second out from Arpe and a complete forfeit of the map.
now from Direwolf. So they found their one pick and they fell back. But to be honest, taking down Enhai Cal, obviously a very strong player, but taking down the Grim, pretty valuable. You know, the Doka B is kind of sitting there without much util left now since that's all been used on the roam clear. But the Grim's Bs would have been really useful for the ex execute. If you look at the defensive side, like what have they lost? Oh, just a gun really. Like Souffle had already put down all this utility. So there's no doubt who that exchange favors, and it is Dire Wolves. However, Shed is really poising to do some damage here. He's forced Jogor back. Jogor didn't want to get too close, too deadly with that Monsi around. And now the hatch is being opened nice and quickly here by Speak Easy, nice and safely as well. Worried about C4s. He wants to finish it off, but he just wants to make sure that he doesn't get shot or c 4 in doing so. A little bit more, and the hatch is open. It's not just the the Grim Bees that have been taken away, Dev, but really just, to be honest, an extra gun. Uh, going down into the basement or making that translation work is always a hard problem, especially in Oregon. And I think, yeah, it's one of those problems where you just really need to throw your bodies at them. And it's quite tough uh, now with the four versus four. Now, while Arpe has used a lot of his utility, he still has two flashbangs. And I think that cannot be understated when you're trying to clear out some of these power positions and initiate yourself in through the execute. Shed is going to provide some info for his teammates. With the final 20 seconds left of the round, it's do or die to elevate. Still a C4 for Joe Gore, but a big swing from MC. He does find one. Speakeasy joins the fray. Another big kill from MC. Big ups to that player. Big ups to Speakeasy. Elevate looked a little bit rough around the edges at the start of the round, but they collapse on site. No plant intended. Simply blitzing on through, steamrolling over that defense. And good signs. Winning their first attack onto the basement. Not an easy task at all. Yeah, great use of the Monty as well from Elevate. I thought Shed, I thought, took away the attention of a couple of those Die Wolves players. Of course, the one inside of Freezer, but even that player inside of Freezer seemed to try and call one of his teammates over to try and deal with that as well. Not just that, but then MC being able to claim all this space off the back of the Monty, being able to zone out these defenders uh, playing something more claustrophobic back on the bomb site was uh, a real done deal there for the crossfires of Elevate on the attack landing that execute. Basement execute is not an easy affair and Elevate do it with what looked like pretty, like pretty easily there from our point of view. Yeah, very much so. Elevate. Pretty happy about that. But what's the prize that you get for winning a basement attack on Oregon, Mandy? You gotta do it again. You gotta do it again. You gotta so do it again. I was going back down to the basement. And yeah, it's a really strong bomb site. I feel like, to be honest, the Kaid pick's a bit useless. Speakeasy is so efficient with that Maverick. I don't think it's gonna make much difference. Yeah. I don't mind some aggressive mute jammers, but I don't know how impactful it's gonna be. It's actually a double reinforcement of the T1 wall into meeting to allow Joe Gore to play quite aggressively here on the stairs. I quite like that. Seal, who's been having a phenomenal game, by the way, almost hit 10 kills so far. He's on the roam too. Elevate looking to do the roam clear of the ground floor. Seal's been pretty dangerous so far on the server and Elevate now playing the cautious game against him. Info has gone out, but like you pointed out earlier, oh, that's a nice shot from Enhai Cal. Headshot onto Seal. I thought the drone work might have been a bit tricky with the setup that's gone down from Dire Wolves, but that's an early pick that's gone the way of Elevate. Things looking good so far. They won a 4v4 on this site. Can they win a 5v4? You'd think so. Especially with Seal gone, like Seal's just been so frag centric this game. By far the. Top fragger on his team thus far. I really like this Monty pick. Like, we talked about it a lot last round, right, Mandy? But yeah. Yeah, just taking Freezer is so easy. Even if you've got someone who plays like Sapper does at the bottom of the stairs with a shotgun, even if you're with Smoke, you're not going to burn that much time against a Monty. It's worth remembering, though, that Souffle is all the way in Tier 3, and I have a feeling, Def, that Elevate probably aren't going to clear him with the time that is ticking away. They look a lot more focused in trying to get through the ground floor instead, getting these hatches open and having a look in towards the bomb site. I highly doubt they're going to be turning around and worrying about Souffle in the top floor. I don't even think they know he's there. Well, they or maybe they will. They're droning Tier 2 now. I'm not sure if they know about the Tier 3 player yet, but they likely will very soon. Shed is going to... Try and climb the ladder here with his drone, and 
He's going to see this Jaeger in a second. Indeed, he does. Doesn't matter. MC swings him from the windows and takes him on down. Very well played. From That was so efficient. Yeah, Elevator very happy now. Five versus three. That was so quick from Elevate. I honestly had no idea that they knew that he was there at all. But the moment that they identified that there was a player in T3, three-away crossfire, Shed was there to support on the Monty as well. Perfect, uh, perfectly dealt there of that situation. Now 35 seconds left to go. Three versus five should be a pretty favorable position here for Elevate. Now it is the basement. So there are still some good power positions for Die Wolves, especially on this backside of the map. But with this numbers advantage, surely they can make it work. Gonna leverage the Grim and the Monty in tandem, but speak easy! <gasps> a big C4 kills Philox's teammate! All it takes is speak easy to find the final kill. What was going on there, guys? A bit of a fumble for Direwolves, while the round was never looking like it was theirs. Elevate certainly didn't need any extra help. This is looking like a very strange game of Oregon. Dev, attacker sided Oregon so yeah, far in the server. Uh, Elevate can only win basement. And Diewolves cannot win basement to save their life. Exactly. It's so odd, right? What has just happened? The Diewolves, I, I mean, the Rome game looks so good. Uh, well, until the early pick came around for Elevate. But even then, Pika was able to fall off. It looks like they had tower control. And then all just really fell apart by the time it hit the execute. They dealt with tower very easily. And then from there on out, Elevate converted it from the numbers advantage. I'm feeling pretty nervous now for Die Wolves. Maybe it's just the basement curse for both teams, hey? Could well be. Opposite curse, though. You know, Elevate curse to always win it and only win it. Die Wolves curse to not win it. But yeah, at least for Die Wolves, like, they can just move on to another site. I would not be too surprised if they have a bit of success on dorms, even though Elevate struggled to do so. Really depends, like, how you interpret this defense. Elevate really leaned into that clash. Speaking of clash, wouldn't be a miss against uh, Amonsi, like we're seeing here. I wonder... So we've, we've got the lesion, though. I don't know. I want to see something to counter this clash, because Sheds That's... had too, too easy a go of it. Yeah, exactly. That's what I'm thinking as well. I wonder what Diwolves have thought of in terms of... Oh, my gosh. That is so dangerous. Very lucky. Wow, Souffle is lucky to get away with his life there. Um, nevertheless, yeah, I was going to say the exact same thing as you, Dev. I wonder what Iwals have thought of to try and deal with the Monty. Now, I think the Legion's been present a couple times uh, through their defenses, but hasn't really come into great effect. There are three sets of impacts, which makes me think maybe they're prepared for it. But maybe that's reading too much into it as well. It might just be what oh, they've decided to bring. I don't know. I think you're right. Like, you know, six impacts, three smokes, and goo mines. That's all chip damage that will kill a Monty pretty quickly if you chain them together. So I'd like to see that. Joe got aggressive. He does find Ape. Pika's a little bit worried about being pushed below. He's actually got a tiny little angle. He could take down N Haikal here. A bit of damage goes out either direction. N Haikal's still hunting. But thankfully, Pika can escape pretty safely. No one was there on the cutoff, even though the vertical pressure was there, and that means that Pika can get away. Shed, he eventually does take that space, but they aren't actually able to claim the kill for it. They're just, uh, you know, forcing the player out of that position. And here come the impacts that we were speaking of earlier. Just a little bit of damage onto Shed, but actually not that much. Nice little free look there, Maneuver. Haikal can come and try and support. We need more of these impacts to come on over. Where's Souffle? That's my question. He's the main player that can deal damage to this Monty. Shed ran in the corner. Oh, hello. There's Joe Gore. Very aggressive. Oh, nice peek. Shed almost gets him. Bit of damage. And that will scare Joe Gore off. Shed's playing this so aggressively here. And Haikal, unfortunately, was not able to capitalize on Joe Gore's fallback as the breach has been enabled. And a big kill there. Joe Gore has hit the floor. Oh, and Shed's made his way all the way oh, inside no. a pit and attic. Oh, that is a big impact. And the second one come out from Souffle will wow. take down Shed. Not just that, but he'll take down MC in that position too. Pika is going to double down on through the execute to take down Elevate. Die Wolves win a defense. Wow, they do indeed. And with that, they also retake the lead, Mandy. Elevate looked pretty solid there for a hot minute, but that Monty going deep, he... Did not realize he was going straight into the lion's dead. The one operator that had the most utility to kill him was that lesion. And Souffle doubled down on that, also taking out the player on the attic window. 
really solid here from Diwals. They're just one round away from stealing points off of Elevate, which is Exciting. unreal. Like, Elevate need to win their next four attacks in a row. Otherwise, their chances of making the top two, staying in the top two, are pretty much done. You know what, Dev? I'm proud of us. We called that impact thing really early, and it yeah. actually happened. Go yeah. us. That's awesome. Yeah, I don't know. Die Wolves, like, they genuinely looked really prepared for that against Elevate. I think, yeah, Elevate tried to make the most use of the Monty combination with the Execute in. But, yeah, by the time they actually hit the bomb site, Die Wolves looks really good on the crossfires and the refrags in particular, I thought were really smooth from Die Wolves. And, uh, yeah, Elevate is struggling a lot uh, on this second half. Yes, they've won out two on the attack on the basement. But other than that, yep, that last round was pretty convincing from Die Wolves. Oh no, why have they done this? They've gone back down to the basement. No, no, no. <laughs> oh so dear. What, you, reckon it, you reckon it would have been better to go to a tertiary site? I, I think so, to be honest. I mean, maybe they think they have the solution now with the whole, you know, the impact impacts. squadron. Six yeah, impacts but... again. No smoke though, so... I don't know. I would definitely be like going all in on chip damage. Absolutely. Any form of chip damage. Oh, okay, well... That's oh, a lot matter. of damage. <laughs> 5v4. The question is, will Diwals get back safely? Because we've seen a lot of situations where they haven't been able to get back safely. Shed is really marching on forward. Look how brave this Monty is. But if he can get baited on through, we might see the impacts come into fruition. He's forced back by the Vulcan Canister. But that's really thanks to the Twitch. MC doing great work with those drones at clearing this util. This is an interesting interaction as well. So because the Aruni Gate is there, they can't really throw impacts to where Shed is at the moment, correct? True. Am, I, am I wrong about no, that? No, you're Maybe right. You're you're I'm right. right about that, right? Yeah, so alas, they, they will have to hold on to them for a little bit longer. Anyway, so he's still, still on the ground floor. Having found the first pick is going to have a look in on through Zulu and we'll hold on to this for a little bit longer. Those are some nice Legion mines as well. They're a bit tricky to shoot out and that will mean that the Monty will be kept at bay for a little bit longer. Speakeasy is going to make quick work of this E-hatch as we've seen him do before. Oh, no. But there's Arpe through the floor, through the vertical, onto Pika to even up the man advantage. I don't know why Pika is over-aggressing there. Oh, this is really good. Seal might even be able to detonate the Vulcan Canister. And he does the impact once again as the Monty's demise. Elevator looking lost. Direwolves on the cusp of the biggest upset tonight. Maybe the only upset tonight. I think it might be time to get off Monty, maybe. The elevate. Mm. I think Die Wolves have got the formula to deal with it. Every time Shed has tried to give them some space, it's been dealt with very well now by Die Wolves. Oh, no. oh, but big 2K there for Elevate. It doesn't matter though. The rest of Die Wolves spring into action the and mine. they can win out another defense. <laughs> oh, the Guru Mine. The tactical so timeout have called far too little, far too late, Mandy. Elevate have been struggling. Die Wolves are cruising this one. Yeah, they couldn't win their first two defenses of the basement, but third time turns out that is the charm. They figured out the recipe to deal with that Monty, and now the onus is on Elevate. These guys might not even win this game from here on out. It's going to need to be quite a comeback. Like, there's no two ways about it. These guys have got to get on their bike, and they got to do it right now. 6-4. And a loss here pretty much cements the fact that they will not make it top two. Fury in their game later today against the Seas Warriors will likely steal all three points and comfortably cruise past Elevate into the playoffs. Oh boy, that could be an exciting one, especially off the back of Reefs' interview from earlier, right? Uh, Fury and Bleed potentially in the grand final on other sides, on opposite sides of the bracket as well. Oh boy, you know, that could be a fun one, hey? Yeah, wow. Uh, it does oh, feel kind of right. Like, we expected so much to change this stage. Like, we were like, oh, Elevate's so new. You know, Fury, the first few play days, not looking so great. But if Elevate lose this to Diwolves, in a way, order has been restored. You know, top two, Bleed and Fury, opposite sides <laughs> of the bracket. Elevate still on the outside looking in, just like last year all over again. Because it's kind of crazy. Like, Elevate have had some great games. They beat Bleed, for God's sake. They 7-0 to Sieb, 7-1 Daystar. Oh, but how about that loss 7-0 to Fury? How about losing right now to Dire Wolves? There are some serious question marks around this Elevate roster. Like, there's so much pointing upwards for them. And yet, massive red flags.
Mm. It's tough to get a read on the team, I think, for Elevate. I am quite a big fan of the Elevate roster, at least this current iteration of Elevate. And even then, I think this particular match against Direwolves, I don't know what the attitude is for Elevate going into it, but I think has shown, has exposed some weakness, I think, in the roster. And a Direwolves that I think are probably playing a really good game of Siege uh, at the moment as well, are definitely punishing Elevate a little bit. I think it just looks like Elevate are kind of tunnel visioning it into an idea at the moment that they think is going to work and over committing, in my opinion. I don't, I haven't really seen their capacity to stop in through the mid round and actually go and reassess what to do. And I think, yeah, Die Wolves are playing a really good game and it's punishing them for it right now, to be honest. And yeah, uh, I think Elevate, um, yeah, they, they should be a really good roster, but some small teething issues, I think, in their game philosophy is going to let them down. Maybe Die Wolves are just the bogeymen of Elevate on Oregon. Because, you know, the last time these teams played on this map, it was actually back in September, and Die Wolves won 7-2. 7-2. And typically, Elevate would get the better at Diwals, even with the old rosters, even historically. But here, it seems like the story goes back deeper. Ape has found his pick. Nice work from him. As we are on a tertiary site, this is Elevate's best chance to bring it on back. And of course, they need to. No second chances now with match point staring you in the face. Big Tower hold for Die Wolves on the defense is a pretty peculiar strategy, but nevertheless, Elevate are looking to probe the map. They haven't committed themselves to one take as we've seen them do previously. They're just looking to try and get what control is afforded to them at the moment. And it seems like Small Tower has been the way. And Haikal snuck all the way inside of dining and has got a look inside a kitchen. Now Joe Gordo's taking out Speakeasy directly behind him, not able to be traded out just yet. And the vertical pressure is there from him as well possibility to look for an entry onto site. Oh yeah, very aggressive there from Seal. MC, who's by the way having a phenomenal game in the fragging department. 2.0 KD at the moment on 14 kills. Ika sneaking on in. He's looking for a flank onto this player above. He's likely to find it. Round in the corner. Shed knows about him and takes him on down. Elevate. Plant down. Looking to lock this one out. N High Cal has the cover. Oh, but he gets double peaked. Well played. Somehow, he managed to get the down on one of them. And that does put a lot of pressure on Joe Gore. Okay, one. Impact doesn't quite confirm it. Two more to find. Could go and pick up his teammate, but too risky. Another player has now retaken above. He won't find the second. Elevate are pushing us the distance here, Mandy. They know that a win is needed. And they're looking to try and fire up as we move into what could be the final round of this game. And definitely the final round of regulation. The last chance for Elevate to push OT. Tactical timeout as well for Direwolves to do a bit of a reset too. They know all they need is one from here on out to be able to close it out. And that last round looked a bit back and forth, but I think ultimately Elevate taking a step back, playing a slower game and one that I thought opened up a lot more options for them on the attack was what they needed. It was the medicine they needed uh, to fight in the way that Direwolves have been bringing into the server. And I think, yeah, this is a great opportunity now for Direwolves to take it nice and early, making sure that Elevate don't have too much of a grip on this game. Just, you know, reset completely. See if you can come up with a plan to go and take them down. But for Elevate, though, that was pretty exciting, if you ask me, Dev. They, they really strayed away from the linear push and brute forcing the Monty House to want to follow it and instead played this really, like, probe style. They looked for all these chances through the map, tried to take the free real estate and then capitalize off the back of that as well. Kept Die Wolves guessing. And I feel like, to be honest, that is the formula against Die Wolves. Keep them spread out and try and isolate the 1v2s and that type of those type of mini scenarios through the map because yeah, I think Die Wolves ultimately will just, I don't know. I feel, I feel like if you're too linear against these guys, they will shoot you. They will hold crossfires. Yeah. yeah, very much. And my concern still is very much on Elevate, right? Like they might've won the last round pretty handily, Mandy, but remember the last time we went to kids dorms? I will smash that. It was a flawless round in their favor. Elevate tried to use that Monty and it was the first time we really saw I was fire up with a solid counter for it. If anything, I'm actually wondering whether the tactical timeout from Direwolves was a good move, because it's also given Elevate a chance to talk about how they want to crack into this Storm's attack. That is a very fair point, to be honest, Dev. And 
Yeah, I, I think Elevate being able to talk strategically here is definitely something that should be mentioned as well. Yeah, keep in mind, you can talk when it's your opponent's tactical timeout as well, right? So yeah, I think you've actually made a very fair point there, Dev. I didn't really consider it until you said it, but strategically, Elevate are starting to overtake Die Wolves here. Oh, oh no! that's a great first pick. That is a great this... first pick on Souffle. I mean, this guy is just nuts today. MC, 16 kills. It's only been now 12 rounds. That is, yeah, that's going to be really punishing. Also, it's onto the Legion, Mandy. That's, uh, in the last round, the Legion was the, the real playmaker. Souffle holding onto Attic. Ooh, this could be dangerous now for Dire Wolves. Pelox is in a interesting position here in Closet with the shotgun on Thorn. Not something you see every day, but should be pretty tricky to clear out if you're Elevate. And Heikel is going to look to see what damage he can do, though, on the Repel as the rest of his teammates try to work the rest of the map. And Heikel is the only person here currently contesting this side of the map because a lot of the intention is instead turned in towards Attic and other areas that Elevate could be trying to take. Deimos as a pick for Speakeasy is a curious one for me as well. I wonder what he's trying to collect out of this intel. Got a drone down below. It, maybe they think there are stray roamers in the ground floor. Well, if there are, he, of course, could track them, but he just wouldn't know which operator it is that he's got to track. For Elevate, you've got to actually scan and ping, find out what operators there are before you can start targeting them with Deimos's gadget. Jogo is the main player on site. Peek has found an aggressive peek. That was N High Cal. The one upside down repelling on the balcony. Jogo has got another big one as well. Elevate fighting from behind. Three versus four. And Speakeasy needs to be careful because he's about to get swung as well. Ape can't get it done. Direwolves with the upset none of us expected. They can barely believe it. A convincing 7-4, 7-5. Over elevate. Oh man, and for a dials, I have looked so shaky through stage one to finish off the final group stage play day. Over elevate is a monumental win for these guys. Absolutely smashing it out on Oregon. I don't think that can be understated. Elevate are an excellent team. They've grown to be a super strong team here in stage one. So to see Divals take this win in regulation is a massive win for them. Forget about number one on the standings, where Elevate stood at the start of today. How about keeping on to that number two spot? Because the playoffs are coming up tomorrow, and if Fury win their game, Elevate are cooked. They have gone down into the quarterfinals. They have left this up to chance, and they are going to have to be the biggest Hasib Warriors fans now. The upset that none of us expected, it's come true, and I'm sure they'll break it down on the desk. Yeah, unfortunately, Elevate, that is a uh, dire situation that they find themselves in now, Guz, considering the, the conversation about the final game of the day. We'll maybe go into that a little bit later, but this is not the performance we had hoped for Elevate, especially going into playoffs. Look, I, I know it's a meme with Jake and I, but it, it literally is top floor diff in this match, right? So you look back in the first half, Divers lose the opening pick twice on that site. They lose it and they still go on to win the round. Basement, very much a similar story or similar theme in the sense that Dio is able to defend it successfully twice, elevate never winning that site. So it's one of those cases where it's a very site-specific issue um, for elevate and a strength of Dio Wolves. When that clashes, we see that really close result, 7-5 in the end, Dio Wolves get that win. And it's quite a big one at that one. I don't think any of us completely wrote off Dialwolves and being able to pull this off, mm -mm. but they have looked shaky this stage. I think we had every right to back in Elevate, especially after last week. Elevate just didn't stand up tonight, though. No, we always thought it was going to be close or it had the potential to go close. Xenox didn't mean that we necessarily imagined that a win would go Dialwolves way, way, especially in regulation. Does this now change the conversation for Dialwolves heading into playoffs? No, no, it doesn't. Uh, and the main reason for that is they have now only gotten up to 12 points, which is, as things stand, can't get into the top three. So they yep. sit fourth. Well, fourth place, fifth anyway. So even if Jalita win later, then it doesn't really matter if they're fourth or fifth. They don't stay, uh, they don't change their side of the bracket. Bleed now locked in for first, by the way. We can say that that's guaranteed. Uh, Elevate needed to win, get all three points and, and accumulate the round differential. Uh, so disappointing, uh, considering Elevate had a lot to play for. But what's even more not disappointing is the fact that for die wolves they actually would have been better off probably letting elevate smash them i say letting <laughs> they, they would never do that but they should have let 
so that they would be on the elevate side of the bracket in the playoffs. Uh, not to be, they came out, they wanted to win, and they wanted to form. I spoke about that in the pre-show discussion, Rob, that you want to be performing well heading into the playoffs. That's monumental for Dire Wolves that they've been able to pick up this win and just maybe alleviate any kind of concerns that we had for them. I looked at them as maybe the best of the rest when it came to the top five, but yeah. you know, clearly now it, it, it's a case that on their day, they're still more than capable. With a MC life game, I guess that it's an unfortunate look for Elevate, unfortunately not being able to get that across the line, going 16 and 9. I mean, guys, this is going to be maybe a loaded question, maybe it's a, a snarky comment, but I mean, realistically, is this an individual diff moment, or do you actually think that the team has played better in the actual occasion? Um, hmm. I think it really just links back to the site diff discussion I was having before. Sure, individual performances and stuff were impactful in this match. You know, Seal was strong on entry, Jogor as well, 3-0. That entry battle was really, really important. But even when Dial was lost the entry on that specific site up above, that was the big difference maker. They got themselves off to a 4-2 half, attacking yep. into Oregon. It's always difficult to bring that back. And Elevate had their backs against the wall then for the remainder of the match. Sure, they responded really nicely, first two rounds of their own half, but it just wasn't enough to be able to reclaim um, that, that deficit, which was really unfortunate for them. And I tell you what, Reaps might be the script writer for this bloody league, right? Because off the back of this, it's incredibly likely that Fury are going to win their game tonight. They'll get seeded into second, and that sets the stage then for the Bleed Fury Grand Final because they won't be met on the same side of the bracket. So just something to keep in mind. Um, obviously, I don't know if that was always going to be the case depending on how things played out. Um, it, it may have always been that way anyway, but it's pretty much now all but confirmed it's just a formality now for fury to win later tonight and then we have them first versus second bleed fury yeah, yeah uh, well, I mean, uh, sorry, I sorry go, to go, 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 confirm go, it for go, him please. it was it, like if elevate had won this game mm. then fury would have got bleed on that side of the bracket had the elevate got the round differential so you're right guts like it's a it's a big change up now certainly is and uh we'll now speak to harambe after a very good performance harambe Loving the okay. go team, my friend. That's that looks that <laughs> actually I feel like that's made you look more knowledgeable. How are you, my friend? <laughs> I'm doing fine. I'm happy. We we yeah. win the games. Nice. Yeah, that's, look, that's I'll be so honest nice. with you, mate. This going into this uh game, the, the conversation around Direwolves was obviously, you know, they're better than the least, but they're not doing uh, well a, a, against the most, if you will. You know, you were struggling against the top four teams. That conversation now changes a little bit. How do you feel like the team started to progress throughout this stage? Um, in the start of the stage, we didn't win against Fury or Glada or Bleed because we were too nervous uh, playing the games. So I told them to just like relax and play like how we played in scrims and we played perfectly, I think. Uh, Harambe, there's no guarantees, but if you do happen to win your quarterfinal, it would be Bleed that you'd be facing in the semifinal. Do you approach that challenge uh, with positivity that you got to beat the best to be the best? Uh, last time we played, we choked a few rounds, so I think with the condition, the situation now we got, I think we can win them. I agree. I think uh, that could happen. Um, in this game, though, more specifically, um, I was mentioning it, second floor for you guys, that, that objective was just so strong. Um, you decided to take the tactical time out before that final round, going back up to dorms uh, to defend it. What did you say to the guys to get the game over the line? Actually, not much. I just told him to focus on rounds. So just don't look at a scoreboard. Just focus on the round and just bring some uh, specific operators. I'm gonna not going to leak that. <laughs> <coughs> oh, sorry. I'm just choking on my own saliva at how good uh, how good you performed today, Harambe. It's incredible to see that Direwolves are now getting over that hump. Uh, is there anything you'd like to, to leave us on, you know, a note for the playoffs? Hopefully, we don't choke in playoffs. Hopefully. Please, please. <laughs> you don't choke. Please, please. Uh, Harambe, I know you won't. Don't you worry about that. And with that, do I do I get one? Do I get one? Do I get a goodbye? Woo! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, guys. Yeah, we love you, mate. God damn. Oh, god damn. I miss these old interviewees. I'll tell you what. Whoa. Look, I don't want to steal Divers Thunder too much, but uh, they brought Triple Trap that final round, by the way. It was Malusi Thorn Legion. So that's... Yeah. <laughs> well, technically. <laughs> Sorry, Harambe. I don't want to ruin your chances of making the major, <laughs> but 
it's not that hard to look at what operators are doing that round. Harambe, <laughs> come, back, come back and let this man know. It's okay. We'll, we'll make sure he's not on the broadcast next time. But look, good signs, Enox. You know, I think uh, a, a little bit encapsulated there by maybe the nervousness of this roster going up against some of the bigger heads and potentially maybe feeling more pressure considering there is only one major spot now. Yeah, potentially. I also kind of look at tonight as really the pressure was off. They didn't have much to lose, realistically, for Diwolves had they lost this game. They were going to stay on the same side of the bracket. They were going to play fourth, fifth quarter final. So they didn't really have a lot to gain, but they didn't have a lot to lose. But clearly showing in a match where maybe the pressure was off that they can rise to a different level. The downside is, though, the pressure's back on come playoff time. Yeah, come yeah. tomorrow. So yeah. they're going to have to play tomorrow, and it's going to be a big game win and you go through, lose, and you go home mentality has to be better for Die Walls. The, the beginning of the stage, they didn't quite have it. Big game from Seal 14 and 6, and I think for Die Walls, what needs to be the case, if they're going to have any kind of success in the playoffs, Rob, it has to be a team effort. Jogor cannot be the solo man. They need more from Seal. They need more from Pika. They need more from Souffle. Those guys need to stand out. Felix, like, unfortunately, having a bit of a rough stage, maybe less expectation on him. But if those four can all play well, yeah, Die Walls can still be a threat. Well, it's uh, the, the fact of the matter is, Direwolves, they win their final game of the stage. That now puts them in the right step as we head to the playoffs. But of course, that's still yet to be unfolded. We have two more games to come. That's after this short break.